All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to my Minecraft Feed the Beast series, which, as you can see, the quarry is in fact up and running. I kind of left it to the last episode a little bit worried that maybe I didn't set it up right, but it it was in fact just clearing up the all the stone that we had up here so that it could build these supports for the quarry. Uh, which did take it a little bit of time, but it is functioning now, which as you can see, it's actually already dug quite a bit. This line right here was where my turtles left off, and it's been going at it quite well. We've already collected quite a few good resources, as you can see here. Ooh, I'm actually going to take those out. I like having my sapphires close at hand. So yes, I'm very pleased with this quarry, and we had a lot of really great suggestions from the last video, uh, one of which was, of course, to use gold conductive piping rather than the stone, which, yes, I, I really should be using, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, remember when I put up that rolling machine? <laughs> I accidentally created an entire stack of stone conductive pipe because I really wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So yeah, I kind of have an excess of this stuff at the moment, which is why I'm using it. <laughs> Another good suggestion was that I can take those electrical engines and just hook them straight into the quarry so that we have even less energy loss, which is also a good idea. But for right now, I, I like this setup, and I don't want to fiddle with this setup, because it's working, and I don't want to break it. <laughs> but when I move it, uh, which my first move will probably be over to this side, so that we can finish up what my turtles there were not able to. Which really was my fault. I forgot to name these turtles, so once I left the chunk they were loaded in, or nearby at least they ceased to function. That's one of the problems with the turtles, but, it, you know, it is an avoidable problem. Just something I always forget to avoid. <laughs> but, yes, they did leave a lot left, so we will, once the quarry is done with this, we will move it over to this side, and I'll play around with some of those ideas then and see exactly what setup I like now, of course, one thing I will be doing on this is setting up a few more electrical engines. I only set it up with two at the moment because that's all I remembered to build. I'll probably add two more on here because, if I'm remembering correctly, the more power this thing is getting up to a point, uh, the faster it will go. And actually, I do kind of like the speed it's going at now. It's basically going at the same speed my turtles do. So I'm kind of all right with that. But I really should put some more on there so that it is more efficient. But my biggest problem at the moment is this. We've got all this stuff going into this chest, and it is starting to fill up fairly quickly. And I need to get it to my sorting system all the way over here. Which, as you can see, my sorting system has actually finished sorting everything that my turtles mined. There is nothing going through these pipes, and that makes me happy. Even though it is an inefficient system, it does work, and it pleases me. <laughs> and this system will still last us for a little bit, but I don't want to just run piping all the way down to my quarry, especially because we will be moving it eventually over to there. And then eventually to somewhere else. I mean, I don't just want to hollow out this whole section under my base. I will go and probably destroy a mountain somewhere. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's the American way, really. <laughs> and we need to get things from wherever I moved the quarry to, to this sorting system. And my somewhat temporary warehouse, it will last me a while, but... For a good bit, we will be using this, and yeah, I need to get the goods to the sorting system. 
So how we are going to do that is with ender chests. So let's head up in here. And now if you remember, we, well, not we, but I <laughs> brought back a wonderful, wonderful villager from another nearby village. This guy who gives you ender eyes for emeralds. And I've got a guy somewhere in my village, I don't remember which, who gives me emeralds for wheat. So as you can see, I've already been collecting the eye of enders that I need, and I should have all the other resources in here to get my ender chest transport system up and running. So let's head back over here to our production facility and get crafting. Ooh, the one thing I do need to do first is I need to get some blaze powder, which, as you can see, I did venture into the nether and got some blaze rods, and I will take two of those and pop them into the macerator, which the macerator, if I'm remembering, will take one blaze rod and turn it into five blaze powder, I think. Yes, excellent. Which I think I only need four, but we'll, we'll do two. That should make sure that we have plenty of materials for this. And I already have, hopefully, all the other materials. Ooh, so if, let's see if I remember how to do this without looking at the recipe. Hint, I probably don't. <laughs> and I just want th three chests for now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Okay. The chest is... Boo! Oh, wrong. Wrong click. Ah, yes, obsidian. I was almost there. I forgot I had the obsidian in my... pack here. That should be working. Oh... <laughs> I need just normal ender pearls, not ender eyes. I actually think I have some somewhere. Give me a sec and I'll find them. Okay, thankfully I did have some around. Uh, when I was adventuring looking for other villages, I did find a few endermen that I did decide to take down for some ender pearls. Thankfully, I had five, and I need four today. Three for the ender chests I want to build, and one for the ender pouch that I want to build today. So, that is all set up. Let's just build all three of those. Excellent. And now I need to make the pouch. Ooh. I think it's that. No. You really think I should... Ah, oh, I was close. I was very close. Just flipped. There we go. Lovely ender pouch. I, I really do love ender pouches. They are just so great. And we actually are going to have this one living right there. Which... Let's just pop these in there. And this is why I love the ender pouch. As you'll notice the three bars up there on the top, and you'll notice that the pouch also has three bars. Whatever code, color code those are, you can take wool and click on them to change the color. You can then click with your bag, or shift click with the bag on the chest, and it'll change the color of your pouch so that they are linked. So these are linked by default because they're the default colors. So I walk over here and open this pouch. I can get to these things that are in that chest. And it's great. You can just pop stuff in and out and move it back and forth between wherever this chest is and the pouch you have in your inventory. It's it's really fun for putting, you know, if you're on a really long spelunking mission and you got all sorts of great resources, you can put them into the pouch. And even if you fall into some lava and die, you can find your chest, 
open it back up and your stuff will be there and it is wonderful. Well, anything that you put into the pouch will be there. And uh, let's actually take this gray wool and whoop, shift, cup. nope. Okay. Shift, click. Hmm. I'm not remembering how to do that. I thought it was just shift, click. But it does not appear to be. Okay. Yeah, there is a... Oh, man. I, I could have sworn it was just shift, click. Let's try that now. Hmm. Enderman. Okay, give me a second. I'll figure this out. All right. Yep. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it wasn't the colored wool you click with it. It's the dye. So I had to run outside real quick and grab a flower. And there we go. Now, now this, there, that is what you shift click. So as you can see, now that I clicked that center bit with some rose red dye, the code is now white, red, white. And then I shift right click with the ender pouch. And now so is that pouch. So if I pop down that chest, only that one over there opens, not that one. We are going to leave you as the default color, though. Ooh, for a moment there, I was a little worried that that may not break. <laughs> uh, I, uh, it's just one of, you know, one of those things. Just like when you're hitting up city and you're like, oh god, when's it going to break? When is it going to break? So, alright, let's head down here. Yes, I still have my jetpack on. And, ooh, actually, let's, why we are right here... Let's just take this one out of commission, and I lost that chest. It's in lava now. <laughs> there we are. One ender chest there. Now when I break this ender chest, it is going to explode full of goodies. Hmm. Ugh. I should probably empty some of this. Uh, let's at least empty the important things. Here we go. The rest, I don't care if it flies out. I can always pick it back up. But yep, there we are. <laughs> Pop that chest right there. Now, throw this stuff back in there. And oh, I'll leave you there for now. And, well, let's actually head back over to the other side to see if this is working. It should be. The two ender chests are now connected. Indeed they are. So let's turn back on the sorting system. And as the quarry collects things, it'll go into that ender chest. They will then come out of this one and into our sorting system. That makes me very happy. And of course I have this pouch, which is connected to the chest up in my production facility. Let's just head back there. Upstairs. And bam, there are those sapphires. Ah, you gotta love ender chests. They just, they're just so, so glorious. <laughs> And now that I have this set up, wherever I move the quarry, I can always have it empty into this sorting system without the use of pipes. And there is a zombie banging on a door. <sighs> I'm going to go take care of that, so I'm going to end the episode here. <laughs> I do hope you all have enjoyed, and that you come back for the next, and have a good one.